If YouTube did not exist, what would my collection be today? And also, what kind of advice would I give my 20-year-old self for luxury buying? Hello, my name is Amy, and on this channel, we're all about making the savviest and stylish decisions around luxury fashion. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I asked you guys on Instagram, what did you want me to talk about or give me some questions so that I can film Q and A's for you. And this is a super good question that I got from my good friend and partner, my live stream partner, the luxury live show. In case you don't know, I will be linking up here. We've been doing live streams for three months now and our show is so good. And I'm not just saying that because it's our show. It's really, really good. The community is amazing. So many interactions really fun to watch or to rewatch if you can't watch live. So I really recommend you to watch it. I'm gonna link it down below and also follow my friend Kat. But basically she asked me this amazing question. How would my luxury collection look like if YouTube did not exist? I think that my collection would be different in a way that I would have a lot less bags, number one because right now I think I'm in the 20s, which is not a bad number. And I know that even people who have no YouTube channels have way more than that. It's just all relative. But I really do believe that for myself, my collection would be a lot smaller to begin with. And if YouTube did not exist, I feel like a lot of purchases wouldn't have been influenced. So I would really be buying more of what I felt at the moment, more passion purchases perhaps, which is a good and a bad thing. Like it really just depends on how you look at it. Most importantly, I think that I wouldn't really know about the resale value or understanding the resale value aspect of luxury or luxury brands. I probably wouldn't have known about the eight bags as much just cause if I'm not consuming YouTube content, most likely there will only be maybe Instagram, but I might not even know about all these accounts that post about luxury content because I just didn't know about it and wouldn't have followed it in the first place. So whatever I see in store is most likely what I would fall in love with and just want to buy. And also um, maybe magazines. I guess I, I used to be a magazine reader. <laughs> I was born in the 80s, so there was no such thing as internet for the better part of my life. Uh, I think we really, really just started having internet connection in my high school years. So it's kind of crazy how different things are today with kids that are born today because they are exposed to these things at age two. The idea of buying really high-end luxury brands meaning going from hundreds of dollars per leather bag to thousands of dollars was an idea that blew my mind that I did not really understand until much later in life. So even when I first bought my first LV bag, it, it was just such a nerve wracking experience. I would imagine that my collection would look more like uh, still many of my coach bags that I own at the time, but maybe just adding a few LVs and um, maybe a couple of Chanel. Honestly, Chanel bags really terrified me at the time. Having said all of that, what I think my collection would be is a lot different from what my current collection is, obviously. And I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing it. I am very proud and very happy about my collection right now. Um, of course, there are still things that I would have liked to tweak. And of course, I'm constantly working on curating and making sure that everything I have, I truly love and use. And if not, they will have to go to new homes. So uh, no regrets right? No regrets because it's a learning process and I feel like you should never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. So all this is happened for a reason and of course YouTube does exist so it does affect me and you I'm sure. I already had an idea of how I wanted my financial future to look like growing up. I knew at a young age that I wanted to be financially free and that savings is really important. I actually bought my very first LV Alma PM at the age of 27 because I was waiting to pay off all my student loans, waited till I got a good and steady job as well as some savings. 
and I already had purchased my first real estate property by that time. So even though not getting into debt for luxury shopping is not really an advice that I would give my 20 year old self because I was already doing those things, I still think that it's great advice for everybody else because it is so important to not get into debt for any reason but especially not for luxury shopping it's really not worth it having said that my very first advice is to buy as early as possible your very first lv or chanel or hermes bag wish that i knew when uh, i bought my first lv that i should probably have bought my first chanel at that time of course if i could redo it that's what i would do i would have bought my very first Chanel handbag or even Hermes, which is even crazier, uh, earlier. So maybe start working on a relationship to not fall for what's popular, especially because if YouTube did not exist, we wouldn't be seeing so many unboxings, first of all, but also unboxings of the same thing. So you kind of see a trend of what is popular at that time. The only caveat is that popular items are popular for a reason because people realize that they are great items. So it's kind of like a give or take. Don't just get into it because it's popular, I suppose. So like, I would think that I probably wouldn't have bought my Chanel Jumbo if I wasn't as influenced back then about the size. I should have probably bought a medium because the classic Jumbo size was the its size to get. It was a, a difference of like a few hundred dollars between the medium and the Jumbo. And even the single flap itself was an influence, although that's a good influence, but you see where I'm coming from. Also the Speedy B25, it was so popular at one point, obviously made popular by Jerusha, uh, but everybody else was also buying into it. And I don't think I would have been influenced to get it, or I don't think that I would have personally have gotten it if I didn't keep on seeing the Speedy B25 coming up constantly. Those are just a couple of examples of handbags that I probably wouldn't really be in my collection if I didn't really have access to YouTube. You really have to make an educated guess or a judgment call for yourself whether these popular in-trend luxury items or luxury handbags uh, are really good for you because even though they do sometimes not work in your favor, they can work in your favor. Mini flaps are the hero bags for me and if I didn't keep on seeing that being popular for a little while, I would not have bought into them. Keep my collection relatively small and curated. In my case, I have a few Coco Handle, I have a couple of Gabrielles, I also have a few mini flaps which you know, they are essentially all duplicates and even when you love every color and combo that you have, you tend to gravitate towards one certain color, right? Buy what you really truly love, enjoy it before you even work on or think about your next wishlist item because with YouTube videos, obviously, you constantly are bombarded with lots of information. This community is wonderful, by the way. We share a lot of information and knowledge, which is great, but you also get addicted. You can't help it, right? Because there's all these unboxings, reviews, Q and A's. They're all amazing content. I make them too, but sometimes it really can sway you into uh, liking something else so quickly that whatever you just bought, you haven't even had the chance to enjoy it yet. So my collection is in the 20s. It's kind of high for me, for my own standards. It's still average, but it, you know, it could be smaller. I, I'm not gonna lie, it could be smaller because I'm sure if I sold off a few things, I'll be totally fine and I'll still be <laughs> okay. And in fact, I would probably be even better off because not only will my collection be more curated, it will be smaller, it will really serve, every single bag will serve a particular purpose and it will get used, it will get loved rather than just sitting there. It's okay to make mistakes. It's so important to realize that this is a process in itself just like anything in life, you always have to go through it, right? You have to go through the challenges, the ups and the downs in order to get to where you are. 
that's what gives you experience, right? So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have luxury bag regrets. It's okay to have bought things that are duplicates. It's okay to have sold off things that you shouldn't have. It's okay to make all those mistakes because that's how you learn. Mistakes are painful and they're difficult to accept. However, they are crucial in your learning and they are crucial uh, not just for luxury purchases, but in life in general, you have to make mistakes in order to know to not make them again. So if I were to give myself the last advice is that it's okay. It's okay. So in conclusion, if I were to give advice to my 20 year old self, so me in particular, I would tell myself, buy your first Chanel classic flap early on work on your Hermes relationship early on, as soon as you can, as soon as you can afford it. Popular bags are popular for a reason, but really, really analyze your needs and your lifestyle before you jump onto the bandwagon because they can work or not work in your favor at the same time. Buy what you love and really, really enjoy it before you work on your next item so that you can keep your collection curated, small, and that it will serve you so, so well. And of course, finally, forgive yourself. It's okay to make mistakes along the way. You'll figure it out. It's fine. You're still young. You can still work on whatever it is. So regardless, like I said, those are things that I would have done differently, but like I said, no regrets. What is the number one advice that you would have given your 20 year old self if YouTube did not exist? If you could do things differently, what would they be? Let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks babe for the question. And if you're new here, I would love to have you back. So please don't forget to subscribe. It would mean the world to me if you like this video as well. And I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.